Good evening and welcome to this edition of Dalsan TV English News, Somalia's top number one TV station for news and updates. My name is Abdelazak Ali. Let's have a look at some of our top stories. Somalia launches national ID cards after 30 years. Somalia expels Atmi's political office head. Opposition leaders in Southwest state demand a November presidential vote and reject laughter grants term extension. Somali parliament speaker extends warm welcome to Djibouti delegation in Mogadishu. Welcome back. The national ident identification cards has been launched after three decades. This historic move marks a significant step towards restoring order and stability in the nation. The massive registration drive aims to empower authorities to distinguish genuine citizens from impersonators. Somalia has officially inaugurated its national identification and registration process, marking a pivotal role for the nation's digital transformation. The launch event held in Mogadishu on Saturday, the transformative potential of the new biometric ID system, which is set to create a host of opportunities for citizens and foster an environment conducive to national cohesion. The Prime Minister reiterated that the introduction of the national ID will serve as a catalyst for overcoming the social economic challenges that have impeded Somalia's development. Moreover, it will significantly advance democracy and the rule of law, further cementing the government's commitment to ensuring equal rights and participation for all Somali citizens in national endeavors. <laughs> شرعيه لو بحنا سي لو اساسو هي ادى ديوان جلنت ددوينه وحي ميل مريسي شرعيه لو دسي هي ادى ديوان جلنت ايو اقونسي ددوينه او مان تايدو انوغو غامينيسا مشروعا فوريتانكيس سيدو كالا حكومتو حي ميل مريسي شرعيه دورست حكته سيدو كالا President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, currently in Dusamareb, the administrative capital of Galmuduk State, was among the first to receive his ID card as part of the nationwide rollout. Pressing the initiative as a significant milestone in Somalia's state building process, President Mohammed emphasized the national ID system will enhance security measures and address critical national priorities. President Mohammed expressed gratitude to the government of Pakistan for his software assistance which played a vital role in enabling Somali citizens to obtain their national IDs. The momentous launch event garnered widespread participation from high-level government officials and representatives of Somalia's development partners. Notable attendees include the European Union, Africa Union, various UN agencies, the World Bank Group, Pakistan, the United Kingdom, the United States, Gulf countries, as well as partners for ID for Africa. This legal identification through a digital process is the basic foundation for a, for a vibrant public and private sector and it will have, as we saw, multiplier effects. Three brief examples. On the public sector side, it's the foundation for the social contract. So as we heard, it will able, enable government, through having access to data, to plan, innovate and deliver at scale. On the citizen side, it will enable them to hold their government to account for delivery of those services. We've seen the potential for this. I've myself visited Estonia, which is a country which probably is the furthest ahead. Everything is online, and it's absolutely fascinating to see how advanced they are in delivery of absolutely first-class services. But there are lots of interesting models, including in Pakistan. The foundation for it, as we've heard, is about trust. Uh, citizens must trust their government that their data will be used uh, with diligence and not be used for any other purposes than that intended. But if this works, there will be feedback loops as government hold their citizens to account, provide feedback, and we heard the, the uh, innovation around grievances, which enables government then to do better. So you get a nice virtual cycle. Secondly, on the financial sector side, um, yes, very few people in Somalia are still included at the particularly those in the rural areas. This will have an amazing potential for financial inclusion in a very simple way to enable people to have this on, online. At the other extreme, um, Somalia, as we know, fighting a big battle against Al-Shabaab. 
And at the global level, this makes it quite difficult for Somalia because of, of the needs around anti-corruption, anti-money laundering, countering finance to terrorism. So this system will enable Somalia to provide the data that it needs. And thirdly, on the development side, um, those of you engaged in, for example, cash payments, this will enable to drive those innovations quicker and faster. Secondly, bigger picture on this, we've got UNGA coming up next week, UN General Assembly, Prime Minister, you'll be representing Somalia. I think you'll have a very good story to tell on this. There is an SDG, a Sustainable Development Goal, 16.9 which calls for legal identity for all by 2030. So Somalia will be well ahead of that by doing it by 2026. And as we know, this SDG is an enabler for everything else, for health, for education, and so on. Secondly, there's huge challenges out there. None of them are going to be solved without technology. We've got AI coming up. Um, so it's not even an option anymore, but it's essential to have this legal identity managed digitally. It is crucial for a state to be efficient and accountable. For Somalia, it's a crucial in, in, as part of your fight against Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab certainly will be rolling out this kind of service to its citizens, so it will help distinguish government. I really congratulate everyone who has put together this two-day event. I thought the Director General's presentation was absolutely superb, very visual, and it gives us a real sense of the progress that has already been made in getting to this stage. There is obviously a huge technical logistical period ahead, but the UK is proud to be the second largest donor to the World Bank Fund, the Multi-Partner Fund, a Partner Fund, and the IMF Trust Fund. And we recognize the work that is involved um, by the international community to support the federal government of Somalia in delivering a national ID program. And we congratulate uh, the leadership that has been given from His Excellency President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed and the rest of the government uh, to this successful point and we encourage them to work with federal member states, the people of Somalia, the private sector, all the other stakeholders who will have a, a share in succeeding and there are so many economic and security benefits around the successful rollout. It's a very ambitious program over the next three years but I believe that the enterprising and entrepreneurial spirit of the Somali people supported and underpinned by a, an excellent structure um, uh, reinforced by I hope support from the international community should give us every chance of success as somebody who whose last substantive posting was in Pakistan I'm delighted to hear about the links between Nadra and Mira, and happy to know that there are friends from Pakistan here in Mogadishu today, and I hope that will show that Somalia is benefiting from expertise from other countries that would not normally be partnering with Somalia to deliver what will undoubtedly be a, a huge project. So congratulations to all the officials who have helped get Somalia to this stage. I think the, the long journey has just begun, but the United Kingdom stands shoulder to shoulder with you in reaching that point. Thank you. The introduction of national identification and registration process marks a monumental step for Somalia, propelling the nation into a new era of digital transformation, unity and progress. Now, in a stunning turn of events, Baba Tunde Taiwo, the esteemed head of Atmis Political Office for Somalia, has been abruptly ordered to leave the country. The move behind this is still unknown. Baba Tunde Taiwo, the head of political office for Somalia ATMIS, has been ordered to depart the country by the Somali government. This unprecedented move has left many questioning the motives behind this sudden expulsion. This is not the first time that ATMIS officials have faced expulsion from Somalia. Last year, Ambassador Francisco Madeira, the head of ATMIS, was also accused of interfering with the country's domestic politics during the administration of President Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo and subsequently expelled. Madeira was declared persona non grata by former Prime Minister Mohamed Hussein Roble, who expressed concern about the envoy's activities. The role of ATMIS in Somalia's domestic politics has been a recurring theme throughout Farmajo's presidency. The Somali government has yet to provide an official statement regarding Taiwan's expulsion. A high level of delegation led from Djibouti led by Minister of Justice 
Mu'min Hassan concluded a visit to Somalia aimed at bolstering the strong bilateral relations between the two neighboring countries. A high-level delegation from Djibouti, led by the Minister of Justice and Religion, Mu'min Hassan Bare, concluded a visit to Somalia aimed at bolstering the already strong bilateral relations between the two neighboring countries. The visit, characterized by warm hospitality and fruitful discussions, has laid the foundation for enhanced cooperation across various sectors. During their stay in Somalia, the delegation had the honor of being hosted by Speaker Madobe, who organized the luncheon in their honor. The event was attended by prominent figures, including the second deputy speaker of the House of the People, Abdullahi Umar Abshir, and other members of parliament. The luncheon provided an opportunity for Speaker Madobe to express his appreciation for the enduring brotherly ties between Somalia and Djibouti. He emphasized the importance of further strengthening cooperation in key areas, such as security, trade, education, and culture. In response, Minister Bara conveyed his gratitude to Speaker Madobe for the warm reception they received in Mogadishu. He reiterated Djibouti's unwavering commitment to supporting peace and stability in Somalia. The minister highlighted the shared history of friendship and solidarity between the two nations, which dates back to the colonial era. Throughout the years, Somalia and Djibouti have collaborated closely in regional international forums, including the African Union, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, and the United Nations. Djibouti has played a crucial role in supporting Somalia's fight against Al-Shabaab militants by deploying troops as part of the African Union transition mission in Somalia. Additionally, Djibouti has provided refuge to thousands of Somali nationals who have been displaced by violence and drought in their homeland. Opposition politicians in the southwest state have demanded that elections for a new president commence in November. The leaders many of whom are presidential candidates themselves, argue that the term extension by the interim president is illegal. Opposition politicians in Southwest State have demanded that elections for a new president commence in November. The leaders, many of whom are presidential candidates themselves, argue that the term of the political arrangement in Southwest State is set to end on November 1st, 2023, following a three-day meeting in Nairobi that concluded on Tuesday. These opposition figures accused President Lafter Gerin's administration of failing to uphold the provisions of the February 4, 2023 agreement, particularly in relation to citizen rights and organization of the democratic and inclusive elections. They claim that the current government has not fulfilled its obligations and are determined to ensure that Southwest state transitions smoothly into a new leadership. The controversy surrounding President Lafter Gerin's term extension began in April 2020 when the state parliament in Baidoa endorsed a motion to extend his term by an additional two years. This decision was made as his initial four-year term, which commenced in December 2018, was sought to conclude in December 2022. Proponents of extension argue that aligning the president's term with that of the parliament, which ends in 2024, will facilitate simultaneous parliamentary and presidential elections. However, the opposition leaders vehemently reject this reasoning and maintain that the extension was unjustified. They assert that the president's term should adhere to the original timeline and the immediate elections are necessary to uphold democratic principles. The opposition demands, coupled with their criticism of President Leftegani's administration, have heightened tensions in the region and raise concern about the future of democratic governance in Southwest state. Well, that story of the opposition politicians in Southwest state brings us to the end of this edition of Dalsan TV English News. My name is Abdurazak Ali. Have a lovely evening.